Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you are back to watch another video. So today I just got my butcher box box delivered in the mail and I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what butcher box is and what meat I got in my box today and then I'm going to share a recipe with you later on too. So first of all, I am not sponsored by butcher box. This is not an ad. I just really love this company. We've been ordering ButcherBox meat for over a year now, and I just really love this company. They have very high quality, delicious meat, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about ButcherBox. So ButcherBox has a subscription program where you sign up to receive boxes of meat to your home, and you get a set how often you want to receive them. You can order them once a month or you can always push back the date to whatever date works best for you. I get them delivered about every other month usually. And then the great thing about this meat is that it is high quality, nutritious meat. So the beef is from cows that are 100% grass fed and grass finished which is very important. A lot of the beef in America that says 100% grass fed is not grass finished. So they feed them on a grass diet for most of their lives. And then the last few months of their life before they are butchered, they are fed grain. And that way the grain fattens them up so they are bigger and have more meat to sell. So watch out for the packaging when you see 100% grass fed. That does not mean it is grass finished. Butcher Box does not lie. It is 100% grass fed and grass finished. The cows eat what they are meant to eat. Cows are meant to graze on grass. They are meant to be in pastures roaming around freely eating grass. The beef that we eat in America, conventional meat, is from cows that are squished together in feedlots and fed grains. Because they are so close, they often get sick and then are given antibiotics or are given antibiotics as a preventative so that they don't get sick. So we have antibiotics in our food. They're given grain, which is an unnatural food for them. And many times they're giving growth hormones. Butcher Box does not ever give hormones or antibiotics and the animals are all humanely raised. They are not squished together in tight quarters. They are able to roam freely where they're meant to roam. So the cows are 100% grass fed and grass finished. The pork is from pigs that are heritage breed. So they are not like hybrid pigs. So they are not bred to grow bigger and produce more meat. They are natural variety of pigs. The chickens are pasture raised chickens. So the chickens again are not in close knit quarters, not in cages like many of the chickens in America are raised. They are able to roam freely in a pasture and eat what they're meant to eat again. Chickens are not meant to eat grain and corn. They are meant to eat bugs. So they are given a natural diet. They're able to go around and peck and find the bugs that they want to eat. Because the animals are able to roam freely and they're able to eat their natural diet, it makes for healthier meat. So the meat is not as fatty as conventional meat is. When I cook my ground beef, for example, from Butcher Box, there's hardly any excess oil that I need to drain. I usually don't even drain my oil off at all. If I run out of Butcher Box meat and I go to the grocery store, if I do ever get conventional meat and I you know, brown the ground beef. There is a ton of oil and I have to drain that oil off. Butcher Box is not like that. 100% grass fed and grass finished beef is naturally leaner than conventional beef. So the meat is healthier, the animals are healthier, they're able to go out into the sun and get vitamin D. The fat that is in the meat is good, healthy omega-3 fat as opposed to conventional meat that is loaded with omega-6 fats, 
which is not good when you have too much omega-6 fat and not enough omega-3 fat. That is a recipe for inflammation in your body. You wanna have a good balance of omega-3 and omega-6. And many of the foods that are in our conventional American diet are filled with omega-6 and very low in omega-3. So we wanna to try to bump that omega-3 content up. So ButcherBox has awesome, high quality meat. Animals that are humanely raised, not given anything unnatural and filled with the nutritious vitamins and minerals that they are meant to have. It's also affordable. So that's the bad thing about a lot of times when you try to get good healthy meat, it can be very expensive, which I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you get what you pay for. When you go to the grocery store and you get a big, huge thing of beef for $4 for a five pound thing of meat, that's not necessarily a good thing because it's gonna be filled with omega-6, it's gonna be fatty, it's not high quality. So I would rather spend a little bit more money and get higher quality meat and then spend less money on junk food like chips and candy and cookies and that kind of stuff. So I budget wisely and ButcherBox definitely fits into our budget. So when you get ButcherBox meat, you get to choose the size box that you want. They have a classic size or a big size. And then you also choose what kind of box you get, what kind of meat you want in your box. So you can get a custom box where you choose the meat that goes in your box. And with that, you can either get the classic box that has nine to 14 pounds of meat or the big box that has 18 to 26 pounds. If you choose the classic box, you get to choose six cuts of meat. And if you choose the big box, you get to choose 12 cuts of meat. Or you can choose a mixed box where Butcher Box curates the box for you and you get a combination of beef, pork, and chicken. You get eight and a half to 11 pounds of meat with that. Or you can get beef and pork, again, eight to 11 pounds of meat that Butcher Box chooses. Beef and chicken, or you can get all beef, and that's eight to 10 pounds of all beef. And that amount of meat that I'm giving you right now is for the classic size, the smaller size. If you get the big box, you get more meat than that, obviously. So I got the custom classic. So the smaller size and the custom where I got to choose the cuts of meat that I want. But if you don't want to have to think about what meat to put in your butcher box box every time and you want them to do the work for you and pick out some good cuts of meat for you, I would recommend getting one of the curated boxes. So let me open up my box and I will show you the cuts of meat that I got this time. So another great thing about butcher box is that they always have amazing deals going on. So I take advantage of the deals. When you sign up as a new member, they always have a new member deal. When I first signed up, I think it was two pounds of ground beef for life. So that means in every box of Butcher Box meat that I get, I get two pound package of meat for free. And then also whenever they have another new member deal, even if you already are a member, you can still add that deal on. You just have to pay a one-time fee. So this was free when I signed up and I get these two pounds of ground beef free in every box that I get. Also the chicken wings, I get three pounds of chicken wings free in every box that I get. This was another new member deal that they had going on. And even though I already was a member, I added it into my box. I had to pay, I think a one-time fee of $30. And now in every box that I get, I get three pounds of chicken wings for free. And then the last thing was bacon. This was another thing. It was a new member deal, free bacon for life in all your boxes. I added it onto my cart and I get free bacon in every butcher box order. So all of this stuff is always free, every single box that I get. Like I said, I get the custom classic box. Okay, so the six cuts that I chose, I chose one whole chicken, that's one cut, bone and pork butt, that's my second cut, 
My third cut was chicken thighs. Fourth cut choice was chicken breasts. My fifth choice was pork chops. It comes with two pork chops. And then my sixth choice was some more ground beef, two more pounds of ground beef. So those are my six cuts that I chose. And then these three are my freebies that I get in every single box. So total, I always get nine cuts. The cost for the box that I get, the custom classic box, is $149. So $149 divided by nine cuts of meats, that makes $16.55 for each thing. So the total chicken is $16.55. The three pounds of chicken thighs would be $16.55. So yes, it is more than what you pay for for conventional meats. But again, you get what you pay for. And I prefer to get good, high quality, nutritious meat that is going to have more benefit for me instead of negative effects. I also added up all the weight of the meat that I got. I got about 25 pounds of meat because this is supposed to be a three pound package, but it's actually 3.23. So some of it is a little bit off. The chicken breasts, again, it's supposed to be a three pound package and it is 3.2 pounds. 25 pounds of meat for $149. That equals a little bit less than $6 a pound. So like this is one pound, this big, huge pork chop, which I could not eat by myself for sure. This would feed me and my two boys. And then there's another one for my husband, which that would be more than what he would eat too. So we would have leftover. We would have probably have close to a half of a pork chop left over for lunch for someone the next day. But each of these pork chops would be about $6, which, I think is a good deal. When I go to the grocery store, if I run out of ground beef and I get grass-fed ground beef at the grocery store, I pay usually $6 when it's on sale. If it's not on sale, it's going to be 7 or $8. And I'm not even for sure if that is 100% grass-fed and grass-finished. This I know is grass-fed and grass finished. Chicken breasts, don't even think about it. <laughs> Chicken breasts, I'm going to pay about $17 a pound. It's expensive. <laughs> pork, I don't even know because my grocery store doesn't even have like good quality pork that is, you know, pasture rage, heritage breed. So I know there are other places around me that I could get some. I have some farms around us and I have gotten meat from them before and it is a lot more expensive than butcher box and definitely way more than what I can get at grocery stores. This is less than a pound. This is 10 ounces, so it's gonna be less than $6, $4. I don't know if I didn't do the math on that yet, um, but I mean, no, you can't get high quality bacon like that for less than $6. When I get bacon at the grocery store, the best that I found is at Sprouts. If I get uncured bacon at Sprouts, I'm gonna pay probably $9. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but to me it is worth it and it is still a better deal than I can get anywhere else for this good quality of meat. So if you wanna check Butcher Box out yourself, I will put the link to them down below. Okay, so for a supper tonight, I'm gonna to make some honey ginger chicken wings with the wings that I got in my Butcher Box box and I'm also going to make some sweet potato fries. So the first thing I'm going to do to start prepping my dinner is to cut the sweet potato fries into the little fry shapes and I'm going to put them in a bowl and I'm going to fill it with water and let them soak for about 30 minutes to make them a little less starchy. So let's get cutting and my potatoes have already been washed. I wash my potatoes and all my vegetables, well, most of my vegetables, not onions or garlic, but I wash most of my vegetables, most of my produce when I get it. So when I go grocery shopping and I bring my groceries home, I fill up the sink with water, cold water, and a little bit of Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile soap, just about a teaspoon of this and then about a cup of white distilled vinegar 
and that helps to remove any bacteria on the produce, any toxins, any dirt. It helps to remove any little critters that might be on the produce. So I like to go ahead and get rid of all that stuff before I put it away in my pantry or in my fridge. That way, you know, I'm not contaminating other food or my refrigerator with produce that has not been washed and that has toxins on it. So if you think about it, when, you know, farmers harvest their produce, the produce rides on a truck. It is not like totally enclosed all the way. And so fumes from the truck and other vehicles can get on your produce. And then you bring that into your house. And if you don't wash it right away, that stuff is lingering around in your house. So I like to go ahead and give it a wash before I put it away. So I put all the veggies in that soak in my sink and it doesn't take long, just about 10, 15 minutes or so to let it soak. And then like some things I can rinse and actually scrub, like especially potatoes, I scrub to get off any dirt that did not come off when they were soaking. And then I lay the produce out to dry. That's a very important step to make sure it's dry all the way before putting it away to help keep mold from growing because that would be just as bad as the bacteria and the other toxins that could have been on your produce. Also, if you buy produce that is not organic, I mean, washing your produce is a very important step. Get rid of some of those pesticides that they spray on the crops and some of the coating that's on, like especially like apples, they put a wax coating on them to make them look prettier. So we wanna get rid of that before we eat it. Whoops. Having trouble talking and cutting at the same time. First cooking demo problems. By the way, expect more of these to come. Hopefully I'll get better at doing some talking and cooking at the same time. But I have grown to really love cooking. Not all the time. Like if I'm in a hurry, I don't really enjoy cooking. Or if it's been a busy day and I'm tired, I don't necessarily enjoy cooking. But I really enjoy cooking like when I have time and when I'm not tired, when I'm just, when I'm like doing it for fun. In the afternoons, I love to make things that I used to buy store-bought. I like to make homemade now to try to make a little bit healthier and toxic-free, control what goes into what I'm making. And I just find enjoyment from it. And I like being as kind of self-sufficient as I can. I'm not gonna say I'm totally self-sufficient and I never will be. I am so thankful that there are farmers that grow crops for us. But yeah, I definitely try to do as much as I can and I'm trying to become more of a homesteader and you know, just make things for my family that are healthier and that are less toxic and better for the environment. Do what I can to use less waste. So I make my own peanut butter, jam, jelly with fruit that's in season, applesauce and apple butter and salad dressings and those kind of things. So I'm saving plastic, I'm reusing glass jars and using less sugar than what store-bought brands use and using organic produce when I can. So. I'm not saying that you need to go out and make all those things by yourself, but as you are able to maybe switch one thing at a time to making it homemade and making sure that you are making it healthier than what you can get at a store or find something that is the same quality as what you could do homemade that still has really clean ingredients and not a ton of sugar and using organic produce and things as you're able to and as you're able to afford. All right, well, I'm gonna fill my bowl here with cold water. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna let the sweet potatoes sit for about 30 minutes while they are soaking. I'm gonna go ahead and get the chicken wings started. I'm gonna marinate them. Get rid of these sweet potatoes bits. 
into the compost bin. So these are the butcher box chicken wings that came in three one pound packs together. And I'm using one pound tonight. Tonight it is just my two boys and myself. My husband is working. He is a firefighter. So when he is on shift, he works 24 hours at a time. So he is not always here with us for supper, unfortunately. I miss him. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Okay, so in my pan of chicken wings, first of all, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of coconut oil and it's not melted yet. So I'm gonna actually put the coconut oil in there and then I'm gonna stick this in the oven to melt the coconut oil and then I'll get it back out and add the rest. All right, so the coconut oil has melted, so let's get the chicken wings out. Okay, and we will add the rest to the marinade and let it sit for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of honey. If you have raw, organic, local honey, that would be best. My honey is raw and is local-ish. It's from my state, not my city, unfortunately, but we got bees earlier this spring, so we should have honey hopefully next year that we can use. Right now, they have to keep it for themselves for winter so they can survive, so that's more important. In the future, we will have our own honey. I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Again, if you have organic, that would be best. And if you have actual ginger, not ground ginger, you can grate some of that and put in also. Next, I'm gonna use a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm using my half teaspoon. I'm just doing half of that. A half a teaspoon of salt, and I like Redmond's Real Salt, full of good minerals from the earth that many people are deficient in. That regular table salt takes out. So yes, we need those good minerals. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of pepper. Do about an eighth a teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm using coconut aminos, and this is a healthier version of soy sauce. So without the soy, which is usually filled with gluten and is genetically modified. This is from non-GMO coconuts. It's just coconut, blossom, nectar, water, and salt. And I am using a half a tablespoon of that. I'm using my tablespoon and eyeballing about half of it. And then I'm gonna use a fourth a teaspoon of onion powder. That's it, so I'm gonna just stir it up. And I don't like to do dishes, so I try to use as few dishes as possible. So I am marinating the chicken in the same dish that it will be cooking in. Okay, so I'm turning it, making sure that marinade gets on all sides of those wings. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator to marinate for about 30 minutes. Okay, so the sweet potatoes have soaked about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain them and add them to the pan with the rest of the ingredients and put them in the oven. parchment paper and then I'm gonna put some coconut oil on the pan and I'm using about two tablespoons of coconut oil not exactly measuring but kind of. right, 
and I'm gonna put it in the preheated oven to melt. Okay, let me get the pan out. That's hot oil, so be careful. And I'm going to add the sweet potatoes to the pan. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. And then give them a toss in that hot oil. All sides of the sweet potatoes are coated. I'm also going to add about one tablespoon of arrowroot flour. This is gluten free and GMO free, and this helps to make the sweet potato fries even crispier. And then I'm going to toss the rest of the seasonings in. I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'll add more salt when they're done. And then I like to add a little bit of cinnamon to my sweet potatoes, kind of like sweet potato casserole kind of a vibe. So I do about a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And toss to make sure the seasonings, the arrowroot starch are evenly coated onto the sweet potato fries. And then you wanna make sure that the fries are not on top of each other. They are in a single layer on the pan as much as possible. That way, they all get cooked and nice and crispy. The oven is already preheated at 425 degrees, so we'll go ahead and put them in the oven for about 15 minutes, and then we will toss them so that the other side gets browned and crispy also. Bake for another 15 minutes and they'll be good to go. Let's stick them in. Right. 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna give the sweet potato fries a head start and we'll put the chicken in in about 10 minutes. Okay, so the chicken wings have marinated a little over 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the chicken wings in. Fries are looking good. So I'm gonna have the chicken wings in the oven for about 25 minutes, about six more minutes, and I will flip the sweet potatoes. Okay, so the sweet potatoes have been in for 15 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and get them out and flip them. If I turn the timer off. The chicken is looking good. So, have you heard the phrase, what's down gets brown? Oh, whatever is down facing the pan is what's going to get brown. But we wanna toss them to make sure that all of it gets nice and brown. You spread them back out. They need at least another 15 minutes. We'll check at that point to see if they need any longer. I might broil them at the end. Okay, make sure they're all in a single layer. Let's put them back in. I'm gonna go ahead and toss the wings too. Get some of that good sauce on all of them. And they are looking good. At the end, we're gonna add some arrowroot water mixture to the chicken wings to thicken up that sauce. Okay, it's been another 15 minutes. I'm gonna take the sweet potatoes out and see if they're done. The chicken is looking about done. I'm gonna give these another toss. Okay, they are not quite done. Okay. Spreading them out carefully. They are a little soft, so I don't want to break them. Okay, so they still need about 10 more minutes. Stir the chicken some more. That is looking good. Almost done. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the chicken wings out of the oven. I'm gonna turn the 
broiler on. I'm gonna turn the broiler on high for the last minute or two to finish browning them. Okay, now I'm gonna make a little arrowroot slurry, which is like a cornstarch slurry. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of arrowroot and then equal parts of water, so a tablespoon of water. Okay, I'm just mixing it together and I use cold water. Stir it together to dissolve it. And then I'm gonna add this to the chicken wings to kind of thicken up the little bit of sauce that's in the pan. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar too. Okay, sweet potatoes are done. You just needed a minute to broil. I'm gonna add a splash of white wine vinegar to the wings to loosen up the brown bits. And then one last ingredient for the wings. I'm gonna add some sesame seeds. I'm gonna sprinkle about a teaspoon of sesame seeds on the wings and toss them. And things are done. Now for the sweet potato fries, they are done. I'm just going to add a little bit more salt. Let me taste. Mm. And just a little dash of salt. Oh yeah. Those are good and crispy. Crispy without being burnt. Chase, try one and see. How is it? Yummy! Yay! Good to hear. Hi guys! You're so yummy! One last thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna whip together a little ranch for the wings. A little ranch sauce. So I'm gonna use some mayonnaise. This is Primal Kitchen Avocado Oil Mayo. I love this stuff because it doesn't have vegetable oil, which can be very inflammatory. It is made with avocado oil, eggs, vinegar, salt, and rosemary. That's it. About a tablespoon of mayo. I'm adding half of a lemon juice. I'm gonna add a little black pepper. Ooh, hot. Not too hot, just a little bit. A little bit of salt. Probably about a fourth yeah. of a teaspoon. And some dill. Dill. And then mix it together. Mix it together. Mommy made this before, I think. Wait, have you, Mommy? Oh, that. See? See how? I'm going to add a little splash of milk. Yeah. To loosen it up some. About an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic. Go. A little homemade ranch dip for your wings. Time to plate. All right, so there you have it. Some delicious honey ginger chicken wings, crispy sweet potato fries, and a little homemade ranch dip that did not take long at all to make. This was an easy, weeknight meal I can make without spending hours in the kitchen. There you go. Get yourself some good butcher box chicken wings and some more meat without all the added hormones and antibiotics and that are fed their natural diet that are able to free range, pasture range, and eat bugs like they're meant to eat. I will put the link to order your own butcher box down below from my home to yours. See you next time.